Shalom Kodashim, thank you for joining me today. We have a special video here talking about the Aleph being in the Bet, Yah in the flesh. We've probably all heard it before that God is in the flesh, in His Son, right? What if we are saying the same thing, just different ways? Well, I believe the Paleo-Hebrew might give us a little insight into what that means. And when I say Yah in the flesh, I'm not saying that Jesus, the Messiah, the Son, is God in the flesh, but I am saying that Yah is in Him, who was flesh. So in that sense, He's Yah. Yah is in the flesh, but He's not Yah in the flesh Himself. So, we're just saying things somewhat similar in a different way without the worshiping of the creation. And so I believe the paleo, working with Erectology in that group and understanding uh, paleographically what these uh, letters, these Aleph Tav, Aleph being the very first letter of the Aleph Bet, and then Tav being the last letter, and of course Bet being the second letter. So if just a little quick synopsis here on the Aleph. The Aleph is the head, it's the leader, it's strength. The paleographic symbol is that of an ox or an elephant, an elephant like a head, it's a big head, or a bull. So it's to communicate a bull. And then also the bet, the B, <clears throat> is like a container or like a house. And so you have the word Aleph Bet, which is where we get Aleph Bet, right? Or we get or the alphabet. And you have Aleph Bet, which is the word Ab, A B Ab in Hebrew is Father. Right? So the Aleph Bet in Hebrew is the Father. And so what we're looking at here with this imagery is on the exterior I have the bet and then I have the Aleph. So the Aleph in Hebrew is kind of a silent um, quiet prefix at times. Sometimes it's it's not pronounced. So the Aleph, the father, the Ab, gets with the mother. And so right next to this Aleph we have the Mem. Well Am, which is for nation or mother, Aleph, Mem, Am, nation or mother, the Aleph goes into the Bet, into the Mem, into the waters, into the womb. He plants a seed. The Noon, the Noon is the seed. And so the Noon is the descendant, right? It's the child, it's the off spring it springs off of from the father the ab and the mother the am so the olive enters the mom enters the bet the bed is the house the, the father is in the house is in the the mem in the mom but the am and produces the noon the seed and what happens the child is reared raised up and he exits through the dalit the door so the dalit to the house and so the son is the keeper, in a sense, to the house. He is the one who inherits the throne. When we put all this together, we've got the bet represented by the bee, the house, the container. The olive is in the bet. He's in the house. He enters the mem, the waters, and produces the, the noon. You, so you've got bet, noon, which is son, bene, bin, also, what, so what do we have? A-M-N. Amen. That's right. That's the truth. Amen. So be it. And so, when I say Yah in the flesh, well, that's what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 19, that to wit that Elohim was in Mashiach. Well, we know that Mashiach, the Messiah, 
Yahusha was a man, that he was flesh. But when we put the context of the entire scriptures together, we see that he was given the spirit of Elohim without measure, that he had uh, the fullness of that spirit, that um, without any kind of hindrance. So he, it was as if he was Yah in the flesh and in, in that sense, but not. we know that Elohim cannot be contained in this little container of a human body, yet at the same time, he was in Mashiach reconciling the world unto himself. And in that same vein, he is in us. This doesn't make us Elohim either, but it means we have that same spirit, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Mashiach, the spirit of Elohim, that same spirit, the same word, thy word is truth, thy word is spirit, is in us. We see that in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKadosh, which is in you. So that spirit of the Son, the spirit of Elohim, that, des that noon, that descendant, is in us, making us sons of Elohim. So we are impregnated, in a, word, in a sense, with the word the seed is the, the word in the parable right so it grows it prospers that we plant plant it in us and what did the messiah say he said i have come in the father's name john 5 43 so who those who don't receive him don't receive the father because he he did the parable saying i sent my servants you guys rejected him, and then I sent my son, and you killed him. So you're rejecting the king because the king sends the son, and they killed him. They destroyed the word. They destroyed the Torah. They destroyed the accuracy of the scriptures, and they tried to poke holes in him, poke holes in the word, make it of none, none effect by adding their own traditions, their own commandments. So he says, I have come in the Father's name. Now, I know people like to say, well, see, Yahua and Yahusha, he's in the name. Maybe that's something, but I think it's more about the, the name is the renown. It's the character of Elohim, his personality, his traits, like a descendant, like a son that mimics the father. He does everything that the father tells him to do, like an obedient son. This is the way to behave and to act is through following the way, the Son. And so he is the characterization of the Father. He personifies the Father. He brings the Father into that this fleshly realm that we have seen the Father through the Son. Yahuwah is spirit. His Son is flesh. The Son in the flesh prayed to the Spirit, prayed to his Father, and he showed us, he revealed to us, his very nature, his very essence, if you will. And so he demonstrated his character, the Father's character, his name, his renown, and characters, what are those? Well, those are letters, the Aleph Tav. And so from Aleph to Tav, the Messiah completes that path. He breaks the seals, he opens the books so that we can understand the Father and His message. In um, John 6.68, Peter, Kepha, he says, he's asked the question, who do you say that I am? He says that you are the Mashiach, you are the Messiah, you are the Son of the living Elohim. He's the noon, he's the seed, the offspring, that word made flesh. And so let's talk about the Aleph. The Aleph, like I said, it can be an ox or an elephant or like a bull. It's a leader. It represents strength. It's the first letter of the Aleph Bet. In modern Arabic, Alif, it literally means domesticated animal. Gematria. Gematria, the Aleph represents the number one, right? It's singularity, Echad. And when used at the beginning of Hebrew years, it means 1,000. So could that be that he reigns with us for thousands of years? Is it just a thousand years or is it thousands of years? Thousands upon thousands from generation to generation. 
the Aleph is in the Bet. He's in the container. The Father is in us. The Father is in the Son. We are the body of the Mashiach, the anointed, risen Messiah. That is who we are. We are the now, beloved, are we the sons of Elohim. So the Aleph is not the first letter of the Bible, though. But what is the first letter? It's the Bet, Bereshit, right? It's the first letter of Bet is the first letter of the Bible, but Aleph, they say, is the humility, right? It's silent, it's quiet, it's sturdy, it's strong, like the Father, and it's also the first letter of the Ten Commandments. In Exodus 20, verse 2, the Aleph, Anoki, I am Yahuwah, and so that's the first letter. It's also in this is my name, Aya Asher Aya, right? <clears throat> it's also the first letter of Amat, which means truth. So he is the silent, strong one, the truth. He's in the Ten Commandments. The Aleph enters the Bet into the creation, into this realm, this physical realm that we have. And then also, interestingly, the Aleph in modern Hebrew looks like a Paleo Tav. Kind of looks like an X. So the Aleph looks like a Tav, the Aleph Tav, the beginning and the end. And that takes us on to the Maserot, <clears throat> the beginning of the story. And if you look at the Maserot, it's said that the the ages, the generations, the mankind started right there at the cusp of Gemini, which is the two figures, but all, that's also kind of representative of Adam and Eve. And then it begins into Taurus, what's called Taurus anyway in modern day language. And so Taurus or Taurus or Tau, Tau is a Greek word for same as Tav in the Hebrew. Taurus is the last letter of the Aleph Bet. And it's the bull. It's the bull Zai. People who were born in this time are said to have been be um, bullheaded in a sense, right? And so we have this time period where creation started, Adam and Eve, and then we moved into Taurus and we see these sacrifices of these bulls. And when Israel was taken out of Egypt, they worshipped the bull, right? They worshipped the olive, the physical they worship the actual creation instead of the creator. So, you know, they have this idea of, well, he's in his creation, so let's worship this creation. And so they make images, they make graven images, and says when they came out of Egypt, they, they made the golden calf and said, this is Yahuwah. But that's the mistake that many people make is they worship the actual creation, the container, the bet that the Aleph is in, and we don't want to worship the physical. Yahuwah is seeking those who worship him in spirit and in truth, not in the flesh and in lies. And so we seek the Father in spirit and truth, and we do not worship and honor the flesh, but we worship the Father, the Ab, who entered the Mem, the waters, and produce the noon, the seed, the sun, the descendant, who shows us the Dalit, the door to the house of the Father. He goes to prepare a place for us so that we may enter into this kingdom. And he invites us into this kingdom through his olive bet, through his olive, through Tav. Each letter, each jot, tittle, it's all part of his creation. It's the 22 characters. The 22 expressions of himself and how Yahuwah reveals himself to us. And it's just a beautiful thing to see how Yahuwah has designed his word to show us these things. And this is kind of a spinoff if you haven't seen this video on hitting the mark, the bullseye. Get a chance to look at that. The main, the eye of the bull, Taurus, is Alderbaron, which means El Debar, the word, right? And so the bull it's a steer. This, he's steering us with his wheel and the bull is kept away from 
the heifers until it's time to bring them in to impregnate the uh, flock, so to speak, to the herd, to um, put that seed into them. And so he says, keep your treasures in heaven. The word treasures is that thesaurus. So we look up to the Shamayim, we see the heavenly scroll, we see the word written in the stars above, and we know that the Aleph is in the Bet, in his creation, and we worship the creator, not the creation. So hope this blessed you. If you haven't already, please like this video, share it, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you on the next one. Shalom.